take a year when when we think that you know the the state was run fairly well. We think, you know, maybe it's 2000. Uh, the, the increase in spending over the last 13 years has been uh, dramatic, uh, over 50 percent increase in spending on an inflation adjusted per capita basis. Um, I think that we have to start with the, the bureaucratic system and the fact that we channel way too much of our spending through the state government where a lot of the spending is, uh, is, is parceled out for political reasons rather than for uh, actual economic reasons or, or reasons that, that are based on the underlying social factors. And so I think that if we keep the money closer to where it is, uh, where it is raised, stop the geographic possibilities, if we uh, get rid of a lot of the bureaucracies, um, a lot of which are uh, mostly there nowadays to uh, protect industry incumbents rather than to protect public health and whatnot, um, I think we can make a huge step, uh, a, a huge reduction just from that alone. We have a lot of other ways in which we take taxpayer money and we uh, spend it on uh, uh, interest groups. Um, you know, the $30 million slush fund to bring other uh, companies, to attract companies from other states. Uh, and I think that's a, basically, we're just transferring uh, resources from some people, from taxpayers, uh, over to uh, other people. It's just a basic transfer of wealth. I think that's inappropriate. Um, there are a lot of other, uh, it, I also have very uh, bold plans for education. And I think that if you look at the education, the amount of money that we waste uh, over the past four decades in inflation-adjusted dollars, the, the spending on education throughout the country, it's a, it's a national problem, has doubled uh, with very little change in, in, uh, in the educational outcomes. So if we can move to a system that, that just by its very nature is more efficient, we're going to save a lot of money that way. Um, and I think that if we kind of do a total do rethink of how we deliver uh, educational and transportation, and, and other services, we can really do a great job reducing the budget, and, and that would, will also allow us to uh, offer taxpayers tax relief. And uh, that you know, those are just going to, to uh, snowball the effect of, of job growth and economic growth in the state. So yeah, that's my uh, coming down to the answer, and I would be happy to uh, have the campaign goes on and provide more support. Okay, okay. I want to throw a question to all the candidates right now, if anybody has any specifics right off the bat. In regards to spending, is there a certain area or a specific function that the state government uh, does right now or a specific department within the state that you would cut or remove immediately right now, what would it be? Virginia Department of Taxation. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good story. Virginia Commission for the Arts says extraneous government should be involved in art. That's an easy one to cut right now. It won't affect anybody. All right. um, I was able to actually, with a really quick glance through the, um, the agency's uh, webpage for the state of Virginia, I found three agencies that do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> um, they all handle uh, research of criminal conduct, and they're, they're researching why criminals act the way that they do. Um, so that's okay. They are the Crime Commission, the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice, and the Criminal Sentencing Commission. They all have this research component. And uh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, and then also, I very quickly, um, I'm an attorney, and so this kind of caught my eye. Uh, the Bar Association in Virginia is appropriated $750,000 a year for continuing legal education for attorneys. Oh my god. Oh no. Here's That's the disgusting. Thing. <laughs> That's disgusting. Um, I, 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 I know a couple of things about continuing legal education. Uh, we have to pay for it. And I've never had a problem in the world with paying for it because I picked this industry, I picked this job, and I knew at the outset that I was going to have to do this. Um, so, yeah, that needs to go, that entire $750,000. Up attorney's bar dues if you need to. Charge a little bit more for the, the courses. But, yeah, there's no reason that the state should be subsidizing that. Mr. Tejas. Um, there isn't one particular, I suppose, I would say across the board, spending cuts need to happen. Um, if you look at the current spending levels for the state of Virginia, 
I mean, by 2015, we're expected to hit about $8 billion in spending. And if you look at our debt, our debt is expected to hit around $70 billion by 2015. We're spending about as much as we are in debt. It's unsustainable, and I think that we need to cut across the board, um, kind of look at the, kind of the same, same program that Lindsay was saying that are redundant or don't work. Um, we have to go in and just look at everything. I, I don't think allocating it to just one area, taxes or uh, the prison industrial complex, is going to solve our problem. We have a massive bureaucracy in Virginia that is continuing to grow. Um, it's not as bad as the federal government, but we're on our way there. Um, so I would look at everything. I think that we need to look at everything, um, and we shouldn't stop with just one department. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, we can't have a discussion on spending cuts without and inevitably taxes to come up. Uh, the question for you, uh, Ms. Bolton, um, your campaign has expressed concern over the uh, disparity in levels of taxation uh, among, uh, on Northern Virginia as compared to residents of the rest of the state. Um, can you just briefly elaborate on this and what would you propose as a solution um, for the current taxation, the status quo right now? Um, sure. <clears throat> what you're referring to is the new uh, the transportation tax, and what this is is it is a uh, um, supposedly it's to uh, improve transportation, mostly uh, metro rail and highways. Um, problem, just right off the bat, kind of get this out of the way. Only 40% of the spending is actually earmarked for transportation. Uh, the other 60% is just God knows what they're going to do with it. Um, so the bill uh, in its past, um, the bill is to, it, it essentially raises taxes in the state of Virginia. Um, it will bring in six and a half billion dollars over the next five years. Uh, some of the problems, um, Chris mentioned that there's dispar uh, dispar disparity, excuse me, um, on Northern Virginia. And there are uh, numerous provisions within the bill Northern Virginia is going to be paying 0.7% more in sales tax than the rest of the state. Um, the hotels in Northern Virginia are going to be looking at an additional 3% additional tax. Um, and then property sales, real property sell, sales, sell your home, is a, an additional quarter of a percent. And whenever you start talking about, especially in Northern Virginia, home prices, a quarter percent is quite a significant amount of money. Um, the, the, the problem is, uh, now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the metro rail, that is Northern Virginia. That, sure, that's fine. Okay, well, we, we're still going to go back to our earmarking problem. Um, it's not going to be spent here. We know it's not going to be spent here because when we grow 60% of $6.5 billion of the, the state government, they're not going to spend it the way that they're supposed to be. Um, it's also, also, it is uh, facially, on its face, it is unconstitutional under the Virginia State Constitution. And that in and of itself, um, you don't have to be a libertarian to figure this one out. You know, you can't have it. So um, I know that one of the, I think maybe lieutenant governor candidates had mentioned, you know, raising a challenge, but not just a, a campaign, you know, a talking point. No, a challenge actually has to be raised to this. Um, we're not going to see the money. We're going to be paying more that, for it than everybody else in the state. So it absolutely has to go. So as a very beginning starting point, what would I do? Um, obviously, I don't like the $6.5 billion tax increase. That's not something I think anyone really enjoys. But the very first starting point is going to be the, the disparity. Uh, you know, why is Northern Virginia paying more? Get those rates knocked back down to at least the same level as the rest of the state. Um, I, I think that, you know, whenever we're trying to change things, we have to, we, we have to do it in such a way that we're not going to turn off everybody, right? You know, we're libertarians, we're a third party. Sometimes our message is a tough pill to swallow. So I think that whenever we're trying to make a change, we have to actually start somewhere that, well, we may see most of our policies as being feasible, other people might not necessarily see them that way. So I think that starting with, let's make it all even, okay, the tax increase passed, we're going to work on that tomorrow. Today, let's make it even. I think that that's, uh, that should be the way to go about this. And that's